This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Good morning. Welcome to members and friends of First Presbyterian Church, and welcome to members and friends over at Covenant Village. Um, I have several announcements I'd like to bring to your attention. Um, we are worshiping indoors live stream because of the inclement weather, and next Sunday we're also going to be inside, uh, this time um, live streaming, next time live streaming from the sanctuary. Um, there will be uh, a lesson, uh, Love Your Enemies, Sunday School video led by Marshall Lafar uh, at 10 o'clock following the worship service. Um, indoor worship begins on October 25th, two Sundays from now. There will be much information sent out about that, uh, but please look for information pertaining to not only worshiping in the building, but also having the opportunity to do so as safely as possible. Uh, there's a couple of educational events that I'd like to bring to your attention. One is Food for Thought. Starting this Tuesday, we will have table fellowship during lunch, um, and the, the series will start October 13th and run uh, through November 17th. That will be Lauren's class on the Apostles' Creed. You better believe it. It is a six-week study, uh, and we look forward to that opportunity again starting this Tuesday, running through November 17th. And then starting on December 1st through the 15th, and then again later in January, uh, I will be teaching a class on the Gospel of Mark entitled All Marked Up. And then this Wednesday, uh, we will be exploring Matthew 25. A series will start uh, with the Reverend Jill Asola, pastor of Northminster Presbyterian Church in Hickory, North Carolina. This series will run on Wednesdays, October 14th, October 28th, and November 4th. Uh, you can zoom in at 6 o'clock to watch the program. Let us prepare our hearts and minds to worship Almighty and All-Merciful God. Good morning. So I wanted to share a story with you all this morning that I thought perfectly summed up stewardship. And my friend Mallory Trogdon, who was very faithful, sent me this devotion this week, and I thought, how apt. So it begins with a young Scottish minister who had just started ministry, and he was very unsuccessful. He was actually so unsuccessful, they cut his salary in half, and he decided that was probably a sign he should do something different. So he started teaching, and even his teachings weren't well received. So then he started writing stories, and this was at a time when no one really was writing fantasy stories, but he kept on, and he was pretty good at it, although they didn't gain in popularity. And from there, believe it or not, he went on to influence people that you may have actually heard of, like C.S. Lewis and Tolkien and Madeline L'Engle, and this man's name was George MacDonald. And even though you may not have heard of any of his books, C.S. Lewis said he never wrote a story where he didn't quote something that George MacDonald had taught him. So. All of that to say, sometimes we are given gifts, then it seems like we are not getting traction with them or that our calling is maybe not what it feels like it is, but God can use anything that he gives us. So with that, I'd like to remind you that if you have something on your heart that you feel like is your ministry or your calling, to keep doing that. There's fruit that we don't always see, and that's the wonderful thing about being a steward. As long as we're faithful, God is faithful. So I'd ask you, what has God given you that you can give back? Thank you. This morning we gather with thankful hearts for the abundance that God has created. We gather to worship our Lord and inspired by this time of worship. May our hearts overflow with praise all the time. Using the responsive reading, let us now call ourselves to worship. O oh, give thanks for the goodness of the Holy One, whose steadfast love endures forever. O oh, give thanks to God of gods, whose steadfast love endures forever. O oh, give thanks to the Sovereign of sovereigns, whose steadfast love endures forever. Amazing 
escaped the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now am found, was blind, but now I see. T'was grace that taught my heart to fear, and grace my fears relieved. How precious did that grace appear, the hour I first and snares I have already come. Tis grace has brought me safe thus far, and grace will lead me In 1 John chapter 1, we read that if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But we also know that when we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will cleanse us from all unrighteousness and forgive us of our sins. Therefore, using the prayer of confession, let us now together confess our sins to Almighty God, followed by our own time of silent personal confession. Let us pray. God of mighty mercy and merciful might, you love us, but we have not loved you. You call, but we have not listened. Wrapped up in our own concerns, we have refused to bear the burdens of others. We have ignored the pain of the world and passed by the hungry, the poor, and the oppressed. We have been silent in the face of evil, prejudice, warfare, and greed. God of grace, help us to admit our sin so that you come to us in mercy. May we repent, turn to you, and receive forgiveness through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer. And all the people said, Amen. So, friends, hear and believe the good news of the gospel. Who is in a position to condemn any of us? Only Christ. And Christ was born for us. Christ lived for us. Christ reigns in power for us. Christ even prays for us. Anyone who is in Christ is a new creation. The old life is gone and a new life has begun. Friends, 
we know that in Jesus Christ our sins are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Amen. Once more, let us pray. All-knowing God, we pray now that you will reveal your presence and your will to us in the reading of your word. Silence in us any voice but your own. Stir in our hearts and minds and strengthen us to respond to what we hear in faithfulness. Amen. Our psalm of today is Psalm 103, beginning with verse 1. Please listen to a word and for a word from our Lord. The psalmist writes, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and do not forget all his benefits, who forgives all your iniquity, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit, who crowns you with steadfast love and mercy, who satisfies you with good as long as you live, so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord works vindication and justice for all who are oppressed. He made known to his ways to Moses, his acts to the people of Israel. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love. He will not always accuse, nor will he keep his anger forever. He does not deal with us according to our sins, nor repay us according to our iniquities. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so great is his steadfast love toward all who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far as he removes our transgressions from us. As a father has compassion for his children, so the Lord has compassion for those who fear him. For he knows how we were made. He remembers that we are dust. These are the words of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Above all we hope, He has 
has done great things. Lifted up, he defeated the grave. Raised to life, our God is able. In his name, we overcome. For the Lord our God is able. Raised to life, our God is able. In His name, we overcome. For the Lord, our God is able. Lifted up, He defeated the grave. Raised to life, our God. thank Sarah Sumner for a very excellent focus on stewardship. It was uh, what we needed to hear and very literary. I didn't all know all those connections. A great message. Thank you. Friends, today is the third Sunday of our 2020 stewardship campaign in which we are being challenged to rise up to our finest hour of financially supporting the ministries of First Presbyterian Church. It may seem counterintuitive to call for our finest hour in the midst of the profound difficulty of the troubling times in which we live. But as I suggested two Sundays ago, it is precisely when things look like they're death spiraling down that we need our response to be our finest hour. It is precisely when things look like Good Friday all around us that we need to muster our finest hour of Easter morning faith, hope, and love. And so, as a reminder before the reading of Scripture, remember that on the first Sunday of the campaign, we considered our finest hour in terms of how God abundantly blesses us to be able to share abundantly. That gives us enough and more than enough to act generously, to support the many meaningful ministries of First Presbyterian Church. Last Sunday, we considered our finest hour in terms of nurturing ministries at First Presbyterian Church that, like the Good Samaritan, dare to extend compassionate hospitality in an all-too-often hostile world. Indeed, to extend compassionate hospitality to friends, strangers, and even enemies so thoroughly that our finest hour becomes our finest way of living according to God's will being done on earth as it is in heaven. And this Sunday, we will focus on our greatest hour in terms of stewardship that, like blind Bartimaeus, is rooted in deep gratitude for the grace of God. So with that in mind, let us listen to our gospel lesson from Mark chapter 10, verses 46 through 52. They came to Jericho. As Jesus and his disciples and a large crowd were leaving Jericho, Bartimaeus, son of Timaeus, a blind beggar, was sitting by the roadside. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Many sternly ordered him to be quiet. But he cried out even louder, Son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stood still. And then he said, Call him here. And they called the blind man, saying to him, Take heart, get up, he is calling you. 
So throwing off his cloak, he sprang up and came to Jesus. Then Jesus said to him, What do you want me to do for you? The blind man said to him, My teacher, let me see again. Jesus said to him, Go, your faith has made you well. And immediately he regained his sight and followed him on the way. Holy wisdom, holy word, praise to you, O Christ. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable to you, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. You know, good eyesight is more than 2020 vision. It certainly doesn't hurt to have 2020 vision, but this does not begin and begin this is not the beginning and the end all of our ability to be able to see well. The best vision has to do with an insight from the little prince. It is only with the heart that one can see rightly. What is essential is invisible to the eye. One of my all-time favorite movies is Tender Mercies. The film stars Mac, played by Robert Duvall, and Rosalie, played by Tess Harper. Tender Mercies is a poignant and powerful story about second chances. Second chances through which we through which the down and out Mac slowly but surely finds redemption when he is accepted and gains loving support from this widow, young widow, Rosalie, and her boy, Sonny. There are many memorable lines in the movie, but the one that abides closest to my heart is in a scene when Mac is particularly frustrated and angry. As Rosalie gently quiets Mac down, she tells him every night, Every night when I say my prayers and I thank the Lord for his blessing and tender mercies to me, you and Sonny head the list. You see, in a glass full empty or glass full world, Rosalie something, sees something about Mac that warrants working with him to fill the glass up to the brim. Whereas most folks view Mac as a glass half empty washout, if not a fully empty washout, Rosalie sees Mac as redeemable. Rosalie cherishes Mac as a blessing and a tender mercy in her life for whom she is profoundly grateful to God. She sees with her heart. One of the many reasons I love my wife is that she sees beyond all considerations of glass being half empty or glass being half full. Jan has this incredible perspective that she's thrilled if there's any water in the glass at all. Who cares if the glass is half empty or half full? We've got water here, and she is grateful. Jan takes nothing for granted. Through thick and thin, she sees one cause after another to be filled with gratitude. She sees with her heart. This morning's lesson from the Gospel of Mark depicts Jesus meeting a blind man named Bartimaeus. Bartimaeus may be physically blind, but spiritually, spiritually from his heart, Bartimaeus can see for miles and miles and miles. Spiritually, with his heart, Bartimaeus sees a far sight better than anyone else in the crowd around him. The healing of Bartimaeus concludes the sweep of chapters 8, 9, and 10 in the Gospel of Mark. And in these three chapters, Mark portrays the repeated difficulty that Jesus' disciples have grasping the concept that those who want to be first in the reign of God must be last of all and servant of all. These three chapters show us the spiritual blindness of the disciples' sense of self-importance. And as if to emphasize the spiritual blindness of the disciples, Mark closes these three chapters by telling us about the faithful vision of a blind man who sees with his heart and is filled with gratitude. The story opens with Bartimaeus seeing what few, if any, others in the crowd can see, namely that Jesus of Nazareth is Jesus, son of David. Now, it's important. Excuse me, it's important to remember here that throughout the New Testament, to call Jesus son of David amounts to recognizing that Jesus is the Messiah. And so twice Bartimaeus cries out to Jesus for mercy. Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And even louder, I love the way he punks the crowd by going even louder. Son of David, have mercy on me. It is a plea for help with overtones of worship and praise. What follows then is a movement from grace to gratitude, from the grace extended to Jesus 
to the gratitude of Bartimaeus in response. There is the grace of Jesus welcoming, calling Bartimaeus over to him, and then there is the gratitude of Bartimaeus as he throws off his cloak and springs up toward Jesus. There is the grace of Jesus healing Bartimaeus. Then there is the gratitude of Bartimaeus immediately choosing to follow Jesus. From grace received to gratitude returned. From grace received to gratitude returned. The way of Gospel of Mark, the way the Gospel of Mark describes this situation, it all starts with Bartimaeus seeing from the heart, seeing from the heart such that he sees to the heart of what matters most. Bartimaeus sees what is most essential about Jesus. Jesus is the Messiah. Jesus is merciful. Jesus is to be trusted. Jesus is the one who makes things whole. Jesus is to be followed. This grace fills Bartimaeus with such gratitude that he will not be silenced by the crowd. He will not be hindered by his cloak. He will not go just anywhere once he's healed, but goes immediately where Jesus leads. This is what it means to see with one's heart, and Bartimaeus is all in. And so in our personal lives and as members and friends of First Presbyterian Church, what signs of God's grace fill us with gratitude? More specifically, through what ministries here at First Presbyterian Church do we experience God's grace? Experience God's grace such that we are filled with gratitude ourselves. The ministries at First Presbyterian Church have value. Let me repeat that. The ministries here at this church have value. They have great value. They have value with respect to how in various ways they convey God's grace, whether it be through worship or Christian education or congregational care and fellowship or outreach beyond our congregation. They have value. They have profound value in that to one extent or another, we are grateful. Grateful for at least one or some, if not all, of these ministries. Grateful for how these ministries enrich our spiritual lives. Grateful for how these ministries equip us, equip us not to be silenced about our faith in Jesus, not to, they equip us to throw off anything that would hinder our approach to Jesus, they equip us to metaphorically, if not actually, spring up in the direction of Jesus and to follow where Jesus leads. And because these ministries have value, it makes sense that our gratitude would translate into the kind of generosity and compassionate hospitality that financially supports the thriving of First Presbyterian Church's ministries, both established ministries and ministries yet to be dreamed into action. Think about that, ministries to be dreamed into action as we move forward. You know, the story of Bartimaeus is part of a larger biblical story. It is part of the story of a loving God from Genesis to Revelation. It is part of the story of how God works with the least likely and most vulnerable in our midst. It's part of the story of redemption over and over and over again, part of the story of being empowered to reach out with radical concern to a world that is crying out for good news. It's part of the story of how this good news plays in our own lives, personally and as a community of faith. This story is written by way of God's grace and our willingness to respond to such grace by throwing off anything that would hinder our grateful capacity to share the good news that we experience in Jesus Christ. And so may this year's stewardship campaign be our finest hour of seeing with our hearts, a finest hour that becomes a way of life, because the more we see with our hearts, the more we are filled with gratitude for the amazing grace of God, the more we see to the heart of what matters most, according to God's will being done on earth as it is in heaven. Then, then the more faithful, hopeful, and loving will be our participation in the biblical story as we make a difference for Christ in the world around us. Then, the more faithful, hopeful, and loving will be our contribution to the story of First Presbyterian Church's ministries. From grace received to gratitude returned. Who knows? Perhaps this stewardship season we will be like Bartimaeus, springing up with gratitude. Gratitude that motivates all sorts of generosity and compassionate hospitality for the sake of the risen Christ and for the sake of all sorts of ministries at First Presbyterian Church through which we proclaim and follow the risen Christ.
May it be so. Let us pray. Fill us with gratitude, O God. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost, we pray. Amen.
give you thanks. We give you thanks. We give you thanks. Brothers and sisters, let us join our hearts and minds together in prayer. Let us pray. Ever present God, we give you thanks for your grace. That Jesus has called us here this day or to our living room sofas or to watch worship driving down the road. Wherever you may be, O oh God, we give thanks that you have called us to this place and yet we look around the world and we see places where people cry out to you places torn apart by war places demolished by natural disasters particularly wildfires and hurricanes places in our land where there are no jobs places where families across our state have been devastated by abuse or addiction and the effects of a pandemic. Help us bear your light into these places that need illumination and healing. God of wisdom, draw near to us. Gracious God, give us a gentleness born of wisdom that we might go into the world and serve as your ambassadors it looks different these days, O oh Lord, but show us how to serve. In order to do that, O oh God, bless us with the wisdom that we need to be able to do it. Rid in us any anger or condescension. Grow in us a wisdom that is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, full of mercy, that bears good fruit. God of wisdom, draw near to us. God of all mercy and grace, give us the courage to seek you out, to search our hearts for your truth, and to be guided by the stories of scripture like Bartimaeus. Since we know our hearts do not rest until they find rest in you, lead us to the pastures of your protection that we might be faithful members of your flock. Help us there to see your vision for us and for our church community for miles and miles and miles beyond the walls of our church. God of wisdom, draw near to us. Healing God, we pray for those among us this day who need to experience your peace and your presence, who need to feel your love in a particular way. For those who struggle with depression's grip, for those who journey with physical disabilities, for those who are lonely or hopeless, for those who are ill, whether terminal, terminally or chronically, for those who bear anger and bitterness, for those who are broken and battered, and for those we lift up to you in the silence of this moment. God of wisdom, draw near to us. You, O oh Lord, have determined that we are redeemable. You have seen us with your heart. And so we pray that you will fill us with gratitude for the value you have for us and in the ministries we pursue. Giver of hope and truth, hear us today as we pray all of these things in the name of Jesus Christ, who taught us when we pray together to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. 
brothers and sisters, in offering our lives to God, I would remind you that today is Red Bucket Sunday. For us here at First Presbyterian Church, that means our nickel and meal offering is what we contribute this day. For all of your offerings, you may go to fpcgastonia.org and click on the online giving link. There you will have an opportunity to make your weekly or monthly pledge as well as give to the Nicola Meal offering, which goes to feed hungry people right here in Western North Carolina. In my house, it's a daily practice. We have this little jelly jar sitting on our kitchen counter. There's not a lot of uh, change in here today, but we've got some paper in here. And it's a daily discipline in our household, and I hope it will be in yours as well. Brothers and sisters, God has blessed us abundantly. Let us return a portion of those gifts as we give our tithes, our offerings, and our nickel a meal offerings in this moment. Brothers and sisters, will you join me in prayer as we pray a blessing over the offerings we have received this day? We bring forward these tithes and offerings with gratitude for the abundance of your amazing grace revealed most fully through the compassion of Christ. Bless us to bless others with these gifts guided by your spirit to be generous in ways that bring about your will being done on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. So with our Storch campaign, we have considered our finest hour in terms of generosity, in terms of compassionate uh, hospitality, and also today we focused on gratitude. And in many ways, gratitude is what, what really gives the energy and motivates our willingness to be generous and to extend compassion and hospitality to others. So go here with a sense of great gratitude. Remember that 
Grace is connected to gratitude in terms of recognizing what has already happened, been given to us. Just like in Spanish we say gracias, or in Italian we say grazie, it's a way of saying thank you where you're acknowledging that grace has been received. So leave this service feeling grateful. And as you go through the week showing your gratitude, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift the light of his countenance upon you and give you peace. Go from that peace, serving the Lord with gratitude. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the God of hope go with us every day, filling all our lives with love and joy and peace. May the God of justice meet us on our way, bringing light and virtue to every land and race. Let us work for peace.